today's class. Aaron the Great and his family were some wicked Israelites. That picture. You are what your daddy is, ain't you? Right. So who's giving us all this false information? Wow. So if we want to find out who's Herod's happy. Should we go to the scriptures and find it out? Right. Should we go to the the docu the documents that's true? Or should we just believe the lies that we've been part to? Let's go to First Maccabees twelve and sixteen. Oh my goodness. Let's just speak and see. Let's just see. Let's see. Let's just see. Because the first one, uh, this is who his happy is. You know, if we've been taught history wrong, I'm, I'm for certain we was taught the Bible wrong. That's right. So bring it out. Sorry. Why is it that? The Christianity doctrine and the truth is the truth. Mm. And the truth. For this cause, we chose Numenius, the son of Antiochus, and Antipater, the son of Jason, the son of Jason Reed, mm. and sent them unto the Romans. So it, why they were sent? Keep reading. To renew the amenity that we had with them and the former league. And the former league. So why is Israelite sent Antipater? To the Romans, and you have to understand, it was us. Wasn't no Edom. Let me tell you something, man. Mm, 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 mm. Do you see where he's so dressed? Huh? Mm. Do you think he would be dressing as sharp as the Romans was dressing, man? Bring it out. Do you think that this man here? I'm gonna tell you, see him in some nice as a suit, ain't he? If this is his pappy, then hey, we going by bloodline. Now. Read that up. Verse back, chapter 14, verse 21. The ambassadors that were sent unto our people certified us of your glory and honor. Read on. Wherefore, we were glad of their coming. We were glad of their coming. Read. And did register. This was a written account. Read. The things that they spake in the council of the people. Read on. In this manner, Numenius, son of Antiochus, and Antipater, son of Jason, the Jews ambassador. What was that called? The Jews ambassador. I'm going to tell you something, man. Israel don't like to read. Mm -hmm. Read. Came unto us to renew the friendship they had with us. Read on. And it pleased the people to entertain the men honorably and to put the copy of their embassage and public records to the end the people of the Laodicemonians might have a memorial thereof. Furthermore, we have written a copy thereof unto Simon the high priest. So, why is it calling them the Jews? <laughs> you know, it's a matter of All right, Shalom. This is her one, Banyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Kao Halaya, Layahawa, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harakar Kwadash, Mama. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and Nagwati, my children. That believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Yeah, man. Uh, this that guy from uh, one. What's the name? One body, and, and Yahweh Shai. Hey, you know, people choose whatever names they choose for their camps, but uh, it's all about the doctrine, man. You know, it's all about the sincerity and uh, their leadership. Now, this guy here that they have uh, speaking, going off. He's clearly an old bottle, you know, uh, stuck in his ways, hard-headed, stubborn, all right, probably lazy when it comes to research. Now, um, he probably was a novice back in the day, but just got old, all right. But now where he's going off at is clear. He's saying that uh, Herod the Great was an Israelite, <laughs> oh my God, you know what I mean? Uh, let me get the scripture alright this is Matthew 9 and 7 it says neither do men put new wine into old bottles else the bottle break the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish but they 
put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved so this guy got to empty out everything he was learning and teach the right doctrine man and relearn everything man become a student from the apostles all right now where he's going off at he showed a he showed a uh a lineage or a family tree of this guy Antipater the son of Jason alright now I'm gonna get into the whole topic dealing with Herod thinking he was a, a Jew and his dad Antipater thinking he was a Jew alright but the, the where, this, it, where this guy is going off at is he's mixing two different Antipaters up 20 years apart man it's just, you know, that's where he's going off at. He thinks this antipated son of Jason was the dad, was the father of Herod. All right, you heard it yourself. So he thinks this antipated here is the son of the son of Jason. He thinks that's the father of Herod the Great, the Edomite. So let's get into this now. It's clear that... Uh, this chapter here is dealing with a war that happened in um what was that 144 BC? All right, 144 BC. It was the Battle of Hazer of Hazer H A Z E R where Jonathan won the battle, all right? And after he won the battle, he wanted to reestablish the uh, am amity with uh or peace treaty with the Roman Empire and with uh, which were Edomites and he wanted to reestablish the peace treaty with who you would call um, the Spartans which were uh, Jakes alright Judah Judites so that happened in 144 BC where Jonathan sent two Israelites one named uh, Numenius which was the son of Antiochus. Antiochus, not talking about Antiochus Epiphanes, but Antiochus, one of the servants or workers of Jonathan that worked for Jonathan. These were Israelites. And he sent Antipater, the son of Jason, Jason being a, a, a wicked high priest, all right, that wanted to steal the office from uh, Onias, his brother. Onias II, I think it was. And he went to uh, Antiochus Epiphanes to try to get that office, the Greeks. All right, so he changed his name to Jason, which was like a Greek version of his name. But he had a son named Antipater, or what you would call Alexander. All right, these were just terms they were using at that time, man. You had a few Antipaters. All right, there was another Antipater um, that was before him. And after Antipater the Edomite, you had uh, an, uh, another Antipater. All right. But this Antipater right here is talking about Antipater, the son of John, Jason. And that's an Israelite. It's not the father of Herod. 20 years apart, man. This right here happened in 144 BC. It was the Battle of Hazer. H A Z E R one it was won by uh Jonathan, all right, a descendant from Judas Maccabees. Oh I think it was his brother. All right. And what he wanted to do, Jonathan started ruling around one sixty one BC. All right. And after he won this battle in one forty four, he wanted to reestablish what Judas Maccabees established in 161 BC which was a peace treaty between the Jews and the Romans so let's get into it real quick man so this dude is clearly going off He's clearly a false prophet he, he, another one bites the dust alright jumping out there with this new doctrine man saying that Herod's an Israelite Herod and his family was wicked Israelites it was like oh my goodness man no Herod was an Edomite and his family were forced under the Israelite rulership under John Hyrcanus. All right. Now, uh, after that happened, you still had uh, Herod the Edomite, which wanted to go back and rebuild Edom and rebuild his people. And they knew they were Edomites. 
but they could never be Jews. Only thing they did was get circumcised. That's it. And dealt with the laws dealing with marriage, so they could marry into our, our nation, which was off. All right, Herod married uh, Aristopolis' uh, wife, uh, sister, Miriam, and he killed his own children. Man, he went crazy on a killing spree. He was an Edomite. All right, and then you had Herod Agrippa. <laughs> you had uh, what's his name? Antipater uh, the Edomite. He was born in 115 BC. 110 BC it was like 20 years later. So that's the father of Herod the Great, the Edomite. All right, and Antipater, he um, he was known as an Edomite, and that's just it. All right, uh, so let's get into it, man. So he's, he's clearly going off. He thinks that this scripture right here is talking about Antipater, the father of Herod. He was two different Antipaters. Get around that one. First Maccabees 12 and 16. Let's bring out the scripture they used. For this cause, we chose Nehemiah, uh, I mean, Numenius, the son of Antiochus. Sorry, that was an Israelite. He didn't even know that. He could tell by the way he paused um, when they were speaking. All right. Antiochus was an Israelite that was one of the, um, the servants or workers for uh, Jonathan. And Jonathan sent Alexander and Antiochus or Numenius he sent them to the Roman Empire to the Senate to try to talk to them and reestablish the peace treaty that Judas Maccabees established All right, and it says Numenius the son of Antiochus and Antipater the son of Jason and sent them unto the Romans to renew the amity that we had with them in the former league. See, in the former league. When was that? That was in 161 BC under Antiochus Epiphany. I mean, under, uh, what was his name? Judas Maccabees, when he went to the Romans for help. Because he heard about how powerful the Romans were and how the Romans destroyed Antiochus Epiphany's uh, father, Antiochus III, which made. Um, Judas Maccabees admired him and, and looked look to them for help alright later after the establishment of Hanukkah and the rededication of the temple so this was 161 BC alright the temple was rededicated in 164 so these were two different time period two different antipaters man so how the hell did he get Herod being an Israelite all of a sudden all right, trying to use this scripture. It says, We command them also to go unto you and to salute and to deliver you our letters concerning the renewing of our brotherhood. So this is talking about to the Lacedaemonians, which were um which were which were Jake's man. All right, Jews. And I'm not gonna get into that right now. Let me go back one more. <sighs> These dudes are tripping, man. This is First Maccabees 11 and 67. It says, As for Jonathan and his host, they pitched at the water of Gennesar from whence betimes in the morning they get them to the plain of Nessar. And behold, the host of rangers met them in the plain who have laid men in ambush for him in the mountains, came themselves over against him so when they that when that they lay in ambush rose about when they that lay in ambush rose about rose out of their places and joined battle all that were of Jonathan's side fled insomuch as there was not one of them left except Methathias the son of Absalom the and Judas the son of Calphi the captains of the host then Jonathan rent his clothes and cast earth upon his head and prayed afterwards turning again to battle he put them to flight and so they ran away now when his own men that were fled saw this they turned again unto him 
and with him pursued them to Cades, even unto their own tents. And there they camped. So there were slain of the heathens that day about 3,000 men, but Jonathan returned to Jerusalem. All right. So that was um, Jonathan, man, going to war with them damn Syrians, I think it was. <laughs> so and he won that battle and he sent out letters to the Romans after that in 144 BC All right, that's when this happened and he sent out letters to the Romans and to, uh, and to the Lacedaemonians which you get the, the uh, term the Spartans from alright now and, and, uh, and that's just it man so these are two different Antipaters man all right, let me get something else real quick. So they were reestablishing the peace treaty that Judas Maccabees set up in First Maccabees chapter eight. Let's get that. Now Judas, this is First Maccabees chapter eight, verse one. So this happened in 161 BC. Now we ain't even get to John Hyrcanus and um, Antipater the Edomite yet. They was born. In, they weren't even born yet. What the hell is he talking about? They wasn't born until. Ant uh, Antipater Edomite was born in 115 or 110 BC. All right, and he died around the time his his son came into power, around 40, 40 something BC, 45 or so BC, man. When um, Julius Caesar chose um, Antipater the Edomite to to set up governors over Jerusalem and put him over Jerusalem, man. And he set up Herod as a governor of Galilee. And then later on, they chose Herod to be um, ruler over Judea, king over Judah, over Jerusalem. And that's why Herod wanted to uh, kill our king, Yahweh Shai. He was They weren't worrying about it from a spiritual view or from the, the way the Pharisees were view, viewing it, like the laws of Moses and all that. They were looking at it from a, a view of, yo, Herod's the king and you saying there's a king born amongst us and he wanted to get rid of that king alright that's why he wrote over the, the head of Yahweh Shai here lies the king of the Jews not him but you know um, uh, Pilate alright uh, that's what they put over his uh, his grave or his uh, you know the cross so that was a, that was a um, a statement saying, "Yo, this is the king right here, Yahweh Shai." But Herod thought he was king. Herod wanted to be a Jew, but he couldn't. He could never be a Jew. That's what John Hyrcanus told him. But he forced him. John Hyrcanus forced the Edomites under the rule of the laws of Moses. All right, and he forced them to be circumcised. Now let's get into this real quick. And this that happened later. They weren't even anticipated Edomite wasn't even born yet, man. He was born around 115 or 110 BC. All right. And John Hyrcanus, he was around around 144 and all that. <laughs> so let's get into it. So these are two different anticipators, man. You got to know that that this guy is talking about here. He thinks that Jason. Antip um, Antipater, the son of Jason, is the father of Herod when he's not. Antipater, the son of Jason, his real name is Alexander, and he's the son of Jason, the high priest of of Jude of Israel. And he was wicked, but you had Antipater, the Edomite, born around 115 B.C. He he was the son of Antipas, or Herod Antipas. All right. First Maccabees 8 and 1. Now Judas had heard of the Romans that they were mighty and valiant. So Judas Maccabees, all right? This was after Hanukkah or the rededication of the temple. So this happened around 161 BC in chapter 8. And such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them and make a league of amity with all that came unto them. See, he was... See, that's why Jonathan was reestablishing his brother's uh, amity agreement with the Romans in uh, chapter 12. 
and that they were men of great valor it was told him also that their wars and noble acts which they had done among the Galatians <laughs> and how they had conquered them and brought them under tribute and what they had done in the country of Spain for the winning of the mines of the silver and gold which is there and that they and that by their policy patience and patience they had conquered all the place though it were very far from them and the kings also that came against them from the uttermost parts of the earth till they had discomfited them and given them an overthrow so that the rest did give them tribute every year besides this how how they had discomfited and battled Philip and Perseus and the king of the Sittim alright the Grecians man which others that lifted up themselves against them had overcome them how also Antiochus the great king of Asia you know the Greek kingdom that was over in um, the Aegean Sea or Greece it was moved over to Syria over in A Asia alright what you would call the Diadoshi alright and Antiochus was one of them Epiphanes now it says how also Antiochus the great uh, king of Asia that came against them in battle having a hundred and twenty elephants uh, with horsemen and chariots and right in the Grecians they got those horses they got those elephants uh, when they were battling against um, uh, what you would call the, uh, the Persians alright and that was earlier when they were battling uh, what was that called man um, what was that called alright the, the Phoenician Wars alright that's when you had the, that's when you had the 300 battling against the Grecians I mean with the Grecians against the Persians alright and them Elamites and the Elamites was using elephants and the Grecians took that on and they, they used that against uh, the Romans but the Romans <laughs> uh, still defeated the Grecians alright they were going to war with each other around this time in 161 B.C. It says, how also Antiochus the Great, king of Asia, is really talking about Antiochus uh, the Third, that came against them in battle, having a hundred and twenty elephants with horsemen and chariots, and a very great army was discomfited by them. Like the Romans was, uh, uh, according to Rev uh, Daniel chapter 7, they took over the whole world after the Greek Empire. So those are Edomites. And how they took him alive. All right, so that's it right there. Let me get to the point. All right, so. Um, so that's what the Jews, Judas Maccabees made an agreement with them. All right, so he made establish an amity agreement. And Jonathan was just reestablishing that in 144. All right, a few years later. After he won that battle. And so he sent two Israelites, just like um, Judas Maccabees, he sent two Israelites as well. All right. To go to Rome. There you go. It says right here, First Maccabees 8 and 7. In consideration of these things, Judas Maccabees chose uh, Eupolemus, the son of John, the son of Echos, and Jason the son of Eleazar and sent them to Rome to make a league of amity and confederacy with them and to entreat them that they would take the yoke from them for they saw that the kingdom of the Grecians did oppress Israel with servitude they went therefore to Rome 
which was a very great journey and came into the Senate where they spake and said, right, and they spoke the words of the Roman, of Judas Maccabees. And that's the same thing Jonathan did. He sent two Israelites. All right. One was named Alexander and the other was named, uh, what is that, Numenius. Here it go, right here, I think it is. Verse 12, chapter 12, my bad. All right, so this dude's going off, man. He's he's another false prophet exposing himself. All right. A spiritual indecent exposure. <laughs> First Maccabees 12 and 16. For this cause we chose... Um, Numenius, the son of Antiochus, and these were Israelites. Antiochus was an Israelite, a worker that worked under uh, Jonathan. All right, they were they were called ambassadors or the part of the embassy. And Antipater, what you call Alexander, the son of Jason. All right, these are Greek terminologies, and Jason was a high priest of Israel, and sent them unto the Romans to renew the amity that he that we had with them. In the former league, see that the former league during the 161 BC with uh, Judas Maccabees. All right, so now let's get into something else real quick. All right, I want to read this real quick. This is about John Hyrcanus. All right, he was an Israelite, a descendant of the Hasmonean dynasty. Hasmon is basically the forefather of Judas Maccabees or uh, Mattathias. All right, they were originally called Hasmon or Hasmonean, paying homage to. The forefather of Methodius, all right? His name was Hasmon. So these were called the Hasmonean family, but they called Judas Maccabees because his last name meant hammer. That we called him, they called him the hammer. So um, it says the high priest, this was John Hyrcanus, the first prince of the Hasmonean family, born about 175 BC, same around the same time. Antiochus Epiphany started ruling. All right, so that was when John Hyrcanus was even born. He was a wise and just ruler and a skillful warrior. As a young man, he distinguished himself as a general in the war against the Syrians. See, General uh, Sendibius. Right, let's get to the point. <sighs> Watch this. It says, forcibly converts the Edomites. So this is when John... Hyrcanus forced those Edomites into servitude, all right? Now, this was after, um, what you would call Antipater, the son of Jason. All right, check this out. Hyrcanus, who had confirmed by the Romans, so he went to the Romans, in the possession of the important seaport of Joppa, subjugated other Syrian towns such as Berea or Aleppo he marched against the fort the fort of Madaba on the banks of the Jordan which had always been hostile in the, to the Hasmoneans and conquered it after a six month siege he also conquered the town of Samaria on the Sea of Galilee of special importance on account of his geographical position, he then proceeded against the Samaritans who had always sided with the enemies of the Jews. He conquered Shechem, one of the most important towns of Samaria, and destroyed the temple of Mount Gerizim. All right, around 120 uh, BC in December. So this was later, man. This is around 120, you know. After victoriously ending the war in Samaria, he proceeded to subdue the Edomites, always a menace to the southern parts of his domains. With funds which he is said to have obtained from David's sepulcher, he hired foreign troops, dismantled Adora and... Uh, Marissa, <laughs> the strong 
places of Edom and forced the Edomites to accept the Jewish religion and submit to circumcision. And that's when dumbass Herod started thinking that he was a Jew. He could never be a Jew. All right, even Agrippa thought that he could probably be a Jew when they could never be that, man. You have to be an Israelite to be a Jew. All right. This is the first instance of forcible conversion into Jewish in Jewish history. And this John Hyrcanus allowed his zeal for the Jewish cause to lead him to take a step which later wrought harm for the Edomite for to the Edomites belonged oh for to the Edomites belonged the family of the Herodians. <laughs> Read that again. All right. And this Hyrcanus allowed his zeal for the Jewish for Israelite cause to lead him to take a step which later brought harm for to the Edomites belonged the family of the Herodians who were to bring about the ruin of the Hasmoneans and that's what they did through Herod the, the devil the Edomite they played us close and uh, Antipater the Edomite the second uh, was all um, playing uh, John Hyrcanus the second close and then you had Herod the Edomite playing close to uh, Aristobulus and Miriam that he married into their family just to destroy it. All right. And went on a killing spree. The Samaritans who still held their strongly fortified uh, metropolis of Samaria with a part of Jezreel remained hostile toward the Jews. For this reason, Hyrcanus renewed his attack upon the, upon them. All right, so basically, that's when he basically um, he forced those Edomites under Jewish rulership, man, Israelite rulership. He says, "Edom unto the Edomites belong the family of the Herodians." See that right there? See that? All right. And through them, you get what? Herod the devil, Herod the Edomite. Now, check this out real quick. All right. Now, this is Antipater the Idumian. And it says, what? We were just reading about what? 161, 144, when uh, Antipater, the son of Jason, that this guy said was the father of Herod, which he's not. He was saying that uh, that was Antipater the Edomite. Nope. This Antipater the Edomite, the Idumian, was born 20 years later or so. It says right here, Antipater the first, the Idumian, which means Edom, born 113 or 115, 14 BCE, and he died around 43 BCE. So that was a little bit after uh, Herod got it, or before Herod got into power, around 37 BCE. Was the founder of the Herodian dynasty, the father of Herod the Great. According to Josephus, he was the son of Antipas, not the son of Jason. All right, again, according to Josephus, he was the son of Antipas or Herod Antipas and had formerly held that name. A native of Edom, southeast of Judah, between the deep, the Dead Sea and Gulf of uh, Aquaba. All right. Now check this out. So that's later, right? Here go right here. It says, uh, it says right here, instead, Josephus explains that Antipater, Antipater's family converted to Judaism. So he can never be a Jew, man. He converted. You can never be a convert. You got to be an Israelite that convert. To convert means to return to something. You can never return to something you were never part of. All right. Converted to Judaism during the forced conversion by the Sadducee influenced Hasmonean leader so he was kind of like a, a Greek Israelite alright John Hyrcanus 134 uh, 10, uh, 104 BCE alright so um Antipater's family converted to Judaism. He was one of those people that 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 one of those Edomites that was under forced conversion 
to Judaism under or Israel being the Israel, to our customs under uh, John Hyrcanus the first. All right, Hyrcanus threatened that any uh, any Edomite who wished to maintain their land would need to be circumcised and enter into the tradition of the Jews. Josephus acknowledges Herod as being by birth a Jew. All right, so it's basically saying he was an Edomite that was born uh, <laughs> circumcised. That's just it, man. And Antipater as being of the same people with the Jews. Nevertheless, this influential family came to be resented by many Jews for their Edomite ancestry. See that, man? So they, they knew that these were Edomites and they was always resented for that. But this guy, this false teacher trying to put Herod in with us and say that he was an Israelite. Nah, that. Nevertheless, this influential family came to be resented. So the Herodian dynasty was resented by many Jews or Israelites for their Edomite ancestry, a fact used by the Hasmoneans and the supporters against them as such in a polemic uh, against Herod to discredit him in the eyes of the Romans as unfit to become king of the Jews and that's when he uh, he snuck his way in there and became king of the Jews marrying into the family Antigonus the Hasmonean is quoted by Josephus as referring to Herod as no more than a private man and an Edomite a half Jew <laughs> so let's hear what this guy says again today's class Herod the Great and his family were some wicked Israelites First back, chapter 14, verse 21. The ambassadors that were sent unto our people certified us of your glory and honor. Right. Wherefore, we were glad of their coming. We were glad of their coming. Read. And did register. This was a written account. Read. The things that they spake in the council of the people. Read. In this manner, Numenius, son of Antiochus, and Antipater, son of Jason, the Jews ambassador. What was that called? The Jews ambassador. Let me tell you something, man. Israel don't like to read. Mm -hmm. Read. Came unto us to renew the friendship they had with us. Read on. And it pleased the people to entertain the men honorably and to put the copy of their embassage and public records to the end the people of the Laodicemonians Leod might have a memorial thereof. Furthermore, we have written a copy thereof unto Simon the high priest. So, why is it calling them the Jews? <laughs> you know, matter.